All right, so just so you know, I don't know what happened to the video. I looked for it, and just so you know, look, I did it. I'm going to have to shoot it again, though. So here we go. Minute 73 for the second time for me. I'm going to rock this thing. Here we go. Mike claims he got a score of 55 with two throws. This is important. Two throws. On this dartboard, is that possible? So two scores. You can go for the two highest. So with 30 and 20, he can get 50. So right away, you should know, if those are the two highest numbers, there's no other possible scenario without doing some other addition. Because um, 30 and 15 is 45. So is it possible that with two throws, he could have got 55? The answer would be no. Find the area of the right triangle. This was this last week's lesson. Area of a triangle equals base times height divided by 2. So if we did that, our base, which if you look at this thing, there's a right triangle. That's why they told you that. So that would be 3 times 12. And then 3 times 12 would be 36 divided by 2 would be 18. And then 18 units and I'm eight, 18 units squared I can't stand that they don't use this and I think I've said this in another video they really should be using a unit so you also understand that you need to say units squared all right a coin is tossed in the game board would it land on red or blue square more often so basically you're counting up the blue which is right here so we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine blue. And I have five, seven red. And I'm gonna double check. So there's five, six, seven, yeah. So then it says which one is more likely? Well, based on the number, there's more blue, so more chance of a blue. But it's all a chance. So blue would be more squares in that that have the color blue on them what is the probability the coin will land on red so we're talking about landing on red out of all these so we would add them together so there's a total of 16 so you would have 7 out of 16 or 7 to 16 is the probability okay then it says, fill in the missing factors for 28. So, 1 times 28, half of 28 is 14, so 2 times 14. So there's the 2, so I'm going to put the 14 over here. And then 7 times 4 gets you to 28. Now this one I know has hung up a few of you. So if you were to multiply these all out, these are called, well, I guess they shouldn't say these are prime factors. These are factors that if they were multiplied out, they could equal just one solid number. But in this case, you're gonna cross out a number that they have in common on top and bottom. So if there's a one on top and a one on bottom, you can cross them out. There's a two on top and on bottom. So we're pretty much for simplifying this by removing factors that both the numbers would have in common if they were multiplied out. A three and a four. Now you'll notice we ran out of numbers and we have six and five times five on the top. But remember that symbol means to multiply. So six times five, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we would have 30 over, well, is it zero? Nope, it's a one. So I know that we crossed out a one, but if it was over zero, that would mean, so you would have zero parts. If you divide it by zero, which would get you zero. So you're just gonna always have like an imaginary one down here because anything times one is itself. So that's exactly what we're gonna get here. How, if every, if they have one group, one makes a group and you have 30, how many would you have total? It's the same as 30 holes. Now this one's trickier. <clears throat> this one is like, if we need to get to 1 and we have 7 over 2, what do we need to get 
to have the same number on top as the same number on the bottom. And that is the trick is to do the reciprocal, the inverse operation, or I think it's reciprocal. So you would put totally brain farting. Put the flip the number over and then multiply across because seven times two is 14 and two times seven is 14. And 14 over 14, if I had, the pizza had 14 slices and I ate all 14, I would have eaten one whole pizza. Okay. All right. One of the black squares has the coordinates of over five up, or sorry, over four up five. So that's your X and your Y, just like the alphabet that goes first, over and then up or down. So what is the coordinate of the other square? So over four up five. So that's this one. This one is over five up two over five up two. See, again, already did it. Okay. If points, if point B is halfway between point A and C, what does the number represent? What does B represent? So here's where, where I might have done this wrong in another video, so I'm just going to clarify. You need to subtract this number from this number. So we have 12 take away two, we're doing range. What is our range of numbers is 10. We have a total of 10. And we need to split that in half. So divide 10 by two. So we have two points there between. So that means we would have 10 goes into two five times. So we would go five over, one, five jumps. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that means I should have the same number on each side. So over here I have four between there and I have four between there, which my number B would now represent seven. Circle the problems below that have a whole number answer. So we're just going to divide them. If you have $400 and you split it with five people, you would get four goes into five goes into 48 times with your zero. So that would be 80. If you have $300 and you split it with 10 people, you each get $30. This symbol is the absolute value. So this I talked about, I think, once before. The absolute value is the distance between that number and zero. So if I have negative 16, the absolute value of negative 16 is just equal to 16. So a whole number, a whole number, a whole number, and now we have some fractions. So, so far, all of them are whole numbers. The question is, is this a whole number? And if four parts, so they all have a common denominator. If they all have a common denominator, the qu you can add, you leave this over, you push the bottom number over, and we leave it the four, and then we just add the top numbers. One, two, three, four. Four over four. Boy, my handwriting is just, I'm gonna erase that. Not impressed today, sorry. Four over four. And four over four is the same as one. If you have four quarters, how much money do you have? A dollar. All right, there we go. You're done, I did it again.